Next question is from Grant Satterwhite. Could someone realistically run MAPS Anabolic forever with progressive overload and still make progress? Yeah, you definitely could. Um, the program was designed to be able to be done in cycles over and over again. Is it ideal? No, it's not ideal. Ideally speaking, when we're talking about a lifetime of exercise, a lifetime of fitness, a lifelong relationship with uh, you know exercise and maintaining strength and mobility and muscle and all that stuff, then you want to train lots of different ways. MAPS Anabolic is excellent at building muscle, speeding up the metabolism, and getting you really strong. It's not the best program we have for mobility. It's not the best program we have for stamina. It's not the best program that we have if you start to become advanced and you want to develop more muscle and sculpt your body. Say right? Sculpting, yeah. Yeah, so, so your best bet would be to, and this is why we have so many programs. Part of the reason why we have so many programs is to help people who have different goals and different fitness levels. But the bigger part, because you got to remember, um, we're trainers first, we're podcasters second. We were all trainers for, for 20 years. I've only been podcasting for five years. We designed all the programs because we thought to ourselves, what if somebody follows all of our programs? What are we going to have them do next? What would we have them do next? We're at the point now where we have all the programs that you would need to have an amazing balance mm -hmm. uh, with your fitness for the rest of your life, where you just follow one after another and you'd be able to really develop an incredible physique, avoid injury, have great mobility, great strength, uh, maintain leanness, all that stuff. So you could totally do one program over and over again, yeah. but ideally you would go through different programs. It could definitely be a frequent flyer, you know. And I, and I think that we speak a lot to like the general average person, like of how to kind of structure something that will give you kind of of continual progress, uh, where you know the 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 principle of uh, specificity still applies. Like if that's like my focus, I really like getting stronger. I like building, developing muscle. That's my thing. Uh, you know, that's something you could have it in heavy rotation, but you got to interrupt that. So that way you still reap the benefits that it's providing. Uh, but you have to stimulate the body in different ways. And the reason why we have you kind of moving into performance is to account for uh, your, your joint health and your joint stability, mobility. That's actually going to go back and contribute uh, to, uh, you know, your pursuits on trying to lift heavier weight and then also uh, move through a lot of these plateaus inevitably that your body's going to recognize a pattern uh and it's going to be you know efficient with that but you're not going to see the same type of struggle and uh you know challenge that you would if you were to venture out and so you know same with with trying to present your, your muscles in a different way and shape them a specific uh way so it looks uh you know uh, what you want yeah the answer is yes you can and uh, no i wouldn't you know, yes, you can do that. If I was training you as a client, um, I would rotate you through the programs. Very similar to how, and to Justin's point, if you loved that way of training and you loved what you got from that program, it would be uh, the primary focus, but I would still intermittently take a, at least at the bare minimum principles from the other programs, right? So mm -hmm. even if I like, and, and I would say this probably closely resembles how we train. Uh, each of yeah. us have uh, different modalities that we we enjoy more or appeal more to, right? So we're all very different, and so we probably follow a you know a one of our programs like like the the skeleton of it uh, most closely, the most common and most often. But then we all know that it's important to intermittently introduce mm -hmm. all these other things. I mean, Sal, you just came off of your, you know, all the uh, unilateral training and drop squats, although you're probably Mr. Anabolic. Almost mm -hmm. every time I ask you, you and Doug are probably doing Anabolic. Justin is always pulling stuff from performance and strong. Of course, mm -hmm. I like aesthetic and split, but yet we all integrate all the other all the other principles and all the other programs from everything from body weight to the suspension training to mobility type work there's so much value in all those different ways of training that it shouldn't be something you forever neglect even if you are going to follow a primary structure for a majority of the time mm -hmm. you don't want to neglect all the other yeah things. and also look at things look we always talk about long term right um, you're not the goal is not to work out for a couple months and then never do it again. The goal, and this was always my goal as a trainer, was to get people to develop a lifelong relationship with exercise. Okay, so look at things from that perspective, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, so Adam just brought up that I stopped squatting for a while and just did unilateral work. Did my squat strength drop while I did unilateral work? Of course it did. I stopped practicing the skill of squatting. However, 
long term, my squat strength is going to be better than it was before because I'm addressing imbalances and weaknesses that I have. And guess what? I've been squatting for the past few weeks, and I can already tell I'm going to surpass the strength that I had before here real quick because I was able to address those types of things. So another here's another great example. Right now, a lot of gyms are closed. So right now, you may not have access to all the equipment you had before, and you're thinking, oh my gosh, I'm not going to be as strong on my overhead press, and I'm not going to be able to deadlift as much or, or whatever as much because I don't have access to that equipment. Follow a program like MAP Suspension, which is just suspension trainers. Do it at home. Are you going to lose strength in those core lifts? You will temporarily, but I guarantee when you get back to them, you're mm-hmm. going to surpass what you did before because you're going to strengthen imbalances and weaknesses that you had that you couldn't necessarily identify because you're always doing the same stuff all the time. 